Hello everyone, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. Welcome back to my guitar building YouTube channel. Today I'm going to demonstrate a couple of tools that I made myself for building guitars. And one of the tools I made several years ago, and it has uh, really proven to be very, very useful in my shop. The other tool I made uh, just the other day, but I suspect it's gonna be just as useful. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll explain what these tools are and how they work. The first tool that I've got here is one that I just made the other day. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is that? Well, it's a template that I use for marking the position of the holes for mounting, direct mounting, a humbucker into a guitar. And it's just a simple piece of eighth inch thick aluminum. And I cut this out on my CNC machine so it's really accurate. In fact, I used the shape that I uh, had to use to make this uh, pickup cavity to make the outline shape of this template. And then I just measured the distance between the mounting holes on a humbucker so that I could drill those holes with my CNC machine. And then I attach this little piece of oak dowel to the center of it. And it's just attached with a single wood screw that was ground flush with the back surface. But the way it works is I just insert it into the cavity and then I can take a, a center punch and mark the position of the holes, which I can then drill with a small drill bit. And that serves as the pilot holes for mounting the pickup. So it's a really simple tool. Now in the past, I used to do this by simply taking a, a base plate and dropping it in there, positioning it, and then marking those holes. The problem is because my pickup cavity is slightly larger than the pickup itself, there's a lot of room for this thing to wobble around, to slide back and forth and side to side. It can also inadvertently get uh, placed in there at an angle. So it's there was always a possibility that those holes weren't going to line up properly. And I can't tell you how many times I had to fill a hole and redrill it in order to get the pickup to line up properly. But with this tool, it's just a simple matter of dropping this down in there and it will not move. It's, it's very snug. So that's how I am going to be marking the holes for my pickups. And I plan to make a similar one with, um, or for single coil pickups. Uh, I'll probably make one for P90s and probably make one for single coils, uh, Strat style and Telecaster style single coils so that I can quickly and easily mark the position of those holes. Now you're probably wondering, since I use CNC to cut out my guitars, why wouldn't I use CNC to drill the pilot holes? Well, I could. The problem is it requires a special bit in the CNC machine and uh, it obviously would require some specific G code to drill those holes. And in the end, this is all it takes. <laughs> I don't have to write G code. I don't have to change bits and get everything positioned so that it will drill accurately. I just drop this in and go. It's that simple and easy to do. So I'll probably stick with just using a template. That's an, a perfect example of how with CNC technology, even though CNC can do a lot of things, we tend to use it for certain operations, but then we'll go back to using more traditional methods for other operations and we combine the two to get the best of both worlds. Okay, so the next tool I'm gonna to show you is, it's basically a sandpaper holder. And I use this to hold little strips of sandpaper as I sand the surface of my frets after I've leveled them and recrowned them. Because as you know, the leveling and crowning process will leave tool marks, scratches, and we have to remove those in preparation for polishing the frets to a nice mirror-like shine. So to do that, what I've done in the past, and this is what a lot of guys do, is they'll cut a strip of sandpaper and then they'll wrap it around a block of wood like this one. And what I've done is I have formed a groove in the center of this edge. And I did that using one of these little round micro files. I just simply filed that, that groove into it. And then I would just wrap my sandpaper around it. And I would you typically would start with like a 600 grit, maybe a 400 grit. And then I worked my way up through the grits until I got to 
uh, or got through a thousand grit. And then from there, I could proceed with polishing the frets. But we would just, I would simply just wrap it around there and then hold it and, and sand the surface of the fret wire. The problem with that approach is because you're holding the sandpaper with your fingers, after a while, <laughs> your fingers start to cramp up and it gets really uncomfortable. And, and as a result, I think that you tend to take a much longer time to, to sand out those tool marks than is really necessary. So I got to thinking of a way to hold the sandpaper without using my fingers and that this is the tool that I came up with to do that. And it's basically just a half inch wide, quarter inch thick, about a four, four and a half, five inch long piece of aluminum. And what I did in the end is I formed a, it's cut sort of a V-shaped groove that runs along about an inch and a half of this edge of that piece of aluminum. And I formed it again using my micro files, you know, and grinding it. Uh, I think I also used a Dremel. And I eventually got this sort of V-shaped groove formed into that end. And then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of sandpaper, I'll take a strip of it, just like this. This is a thousand grit. And then I'll cut off just a, a piece from the end of it. And then what I'll do is I'll place that, I'll center it over that groove and then wrap the sides, wrap the sandpaper around the sides. Then what I'll do to hold it in place is I've got one of these little uh, paper clips and I'll just simply slide it over the piece of sandpaper and that holds it into place. So now I can just simply sand the top surface of that fret wire without having to hold that sandpaper with my fingers. And I'll work up all the way through the frets, starting out with, uh, with 400 to 600 grit, and then I'll work my way up through 1000 grit, and then from there I can proceed with polishing. But it's just a simple tool. It's got a couple of pieces of scrap wood that I glued to the end of the, the piece of aluminum with epoxy, and then just sort of formed a nice shape to make it comfortable to hold. So. Real simple tool. Those are just two of the many different tools that I have created and plan to create in the future for making guitars. They're just ways to simplify and make the process a little bit easier and to improve quality and craftsmanship. And in future episodes, I'm gonna talk about several other tools that I use, and that uh, will include some templates. Uh, I've got a radius sanding beam that I'm gonna mill out of aluminum. And I've also come up with a fixture that works with this table. It attaches up here to, the, to this extension. And what it will allow me to do is to precisely position the neck as I am gluing it into the body so that everything stays perfectly in line along the center line. So stay tuned for that. Those will be talked about in a future video. And that's all I've got for today. And if you found this to be useful, please give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, do all that kind of stuff. And then as always, if you would like to support this channel and continue seeing fresh new content on the subject of building guitars, head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase a plan either for a guitar or one of the other tools that I have made that I've actually talked about here on this YouTube channel. And even if you don't make the plan that you purchase, just know that your purchase is helping to support my channel and to keep me going. And if you don't wanna buy a plan but would still like to show some support, uh, I've got some t-shirts down in my merch shelf below. And if you can't see that merch shelf, there's a link in the description that you can click on and check out those shirts and make a purchase if you would like to. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.